Good morning, welcome to the Art Money Talk. My name is Mo. Today's question is, what is the best camera to photograph my artwork? This video is made for those of you who are artists and who would like to take photos of your own art for your own communication instead of hiring a professional photographer. My short answer is, what is your budget? Because depending on how much money you're willing to spend, there are different options. For example, a DJ bag Hasselblad can cost more than $45,000. That's a lot of money. Not to even mention the maintenance, the insurance, the accessories, and also you need a bigger, faster computer to edit large format photos. So you can spend a lot of money, 50, 60,000 for a camera. However, do you need a Hasselblad to take good photos of your artwork? The answer is absolutely not. Today, I'm going to show you nine cameras in three different categories you can choose from to use to take good photos of your artwork depending on your wallet. First, I would like to make a disclaimer. All these cameras I recommend are from my own experience. I have owned or used those cameras myself. Nobody pays me to say what I say, so take it with a grain of salt and try those cameras out before you purchase. Professional level. A full frame digital DSLR is one of the best options to take good photos of your artwork. It is versatile and it is relatively affordable compared to a Hasselblad or Phase One. When I was a photographer, I was using the legendary 5D Mark II for several years and I absolutely love this camera. And now along the same line, you have different cameras even better, like the 5D Mark IV, the 6D Mark II, and the 1DX. Personally, I think the Vandy X is a bit too much. However, if you have the money and you want to invest in a good camera, why not? It will last you a very long time. Also, other brands like Nikon makes decent cameras. I'm using examples from Canon because I use Canon myself. Also, check out the cameras from other brands if you would like. Price. The cheaper full-frame digital DSLR body can cost under $2,000, but if you want to purchase with a very good lens, it will definitely cost over $2,000. That is still a very good pricing range considered that is a full-frame, high-quality professional digital camera. If you purchase a Phase 1 or Hasselblad, it will cost tens of thousands of dollars. One advantage is that this camera is used by so many professional photographers, so you can easily get a hold of spare parts, maintenance, reparation, and you can rent lenses easily even when you're traveling across the world. Another good advantage is that it produces very good high quality image with very high resolution, so you can use it for reproduction of your art or for selling art print. One disadvantage is that you will need a lot of time to get used to a professional camera like this. There is a very steep learning curve. I think it took me a couple of months until I can fully manage different settings, accessories, and to use it to shoot videos and photos. Prosumer level. Like the name suggests, prosumer cameras are the cameras between professional cameras and consumer cameras. Prosumer cameras, make sense? One of the most popular prosumer camera is the Evo cameras. They're not evil like demons, no, not at all. They're evil because they're the electronic viewfinder interchangeable lenses. I would rather call it the mirrorless or micro four thirds cameras for the sensor size to avoid confusion because I don't want to call them evil because they're really nice. One of its best kind today is the Olympus EM10 Mark III, sold just under $800. Also, the smaller DSLR, not full frame, but the APS-C sensor cameras are also considered prosumer cameras, although personally, I think they are professional enough. Such as the Canon 77D and the Canon 80D, they are considered prosumer cameras, but for me, they are very good. Pricing range. It may cost anything from $400 to $1,000, with or without the lens, depending on the brand, sensor size, accessories, and many other factors. Personally, I love prosumer cameras. I use them all the time around the year. The Olympus EM5 and PM5 I bought a few years ago, which I still use today. They're very easy to use. And I would say you can easily take good photos with your eyes closed. Also, prosumer cameras is very different from the point-and-shoot cameras, although the price can be very similar. One good thing about the prosumer cameras, usually it has the interchangeable lens. When you're taking pictures of your art, it's very, very important to change the lens. You have the kit lens, that is, when you buy the camera, it comes almost for free with the package, and then you need to buy a prime lens, that is the fixed focal lens, that doesn't zoom in and out. Those kind of fixed lenses are usually higher quality at the same price than the zoom lenses. 
For example, if you use Olympus, buy a 45 millimeter. This is a grid lens. If you're using Canon APS-C censored, buy this Canon 50 millimeter 1.4. This is a grid lens. I use it myself and it's definitely one of my best purchase in the Canon lens range. The disadvantage is that you can grow out of this gear very quickly when you start selling. Perhaps you have a very limited budget as an emerging fun art professional, but when you started selling your art, you get a lot of money. You want to upgrade your gears when you have money, right? So the thing is that if you want to upgrade to a digital full frame DSLR, you probably need to throw everything out or sell it online. You're not able to use almost anything at all from your prosumer level gears. For example, even the lenses from the same brand like Canon is not compatible between the APS-C censored cameras and full frame digital cameras. You see that when you put it on, you have this dark edges around the four corners. It will definitely ruin your picture. Phone cameras. Few years ago, I wouldn't suggest you to use your phone. However, today there are so many good brands are making great phones that are very good to take anything. For example, the iPhone XR, the Samsung Galaxy Note 9, and the Huawei P20 Pro. Those are the great phones with great cameras at an acceptable price range. The price range is very wide depending on where you are in the world. It can cost anything from $200 to $1,200. Also depending on if you have a contract with a mobile service provider or if you buy it straight out of a store. The best thing about having a phone camera is that it's always with you, almost 24 seven. So whenever you need to take a good photo, you just take it out and snap. And also that once you take a photo with your phone, you can easily upload to Instagram and start marketing and promoting your art. The first disadvantage is the form factor. That is a square, rectangular, flat little thing that when you take pictures, you want to hold it sturdy. But because it's almost all screen, so you don't want to block the image. So I don't have the same sturdy grip as I have this a professional camera in my hand. It doesn't feel the same. The second disadvantage is minor, but it's also annoying, is that it doesn't work out of the box with a tripod. You need to buy this mobile adapter and to work with a tripod. Also, sometimes when you're taking photos of your art, suddenly you have a message or a call and then you are interrupted and then you get carried away by some other tasks and then you forget about taking pictures of your art. It also happens to me sometimes. Last but not the least, it doesn't work with flash or strobes, those kind of professional lightings because it needs to be triggered by a proper camera. You can use some softwares like Android apps to hack it, but you don't get the same results. It's not fully controlled like a professional camera. If you're taking photos of your art with your mobile phone, then you are relying on natural light or continuous lighting like the soft boxes and those umbrellas, which I'm using now. Overall, the cheapest options to start taking photos is with your smartphone and perhaps you already have one in your hand right now. So you can start trying and playing with different ways to take photos. When you are ready, you can upgrade to a digital DSLR such as Canon 5D Mark IV is a very good option, but then you need to take time to learn how to use it. But if you don't have much time to learn and you have some money to spend to upgrade your gears, you can buy a prosumer level camera. Those are your best friend for those of you who wants to take decent pictures out of the box immediately. They are very easy to manage. You don't need to read manuals at all. Perhaps you need to just watch a tutorial to get the right settings. The prosumer cameras can also work with strobe lights and can also record large format files in the raw format, which you can go in the Lightroom or Photoshop and pull all the details out of your artwork. And the best part is the prosumer level cameras are very economic. Here are nine cameras on this list right here. Perhaps you can find one camera that is the most suitable for your budget and for your purpose. Later this week, I will be telling more about how to take decent photos of your artwork. Stay tuned and click on the subscription button. Thanks very much for watching and see you in the next video.